Hello everyone. In this video, you will see how we can create a unique DB schedule or distribution board panel schedule using Excel. So first thing we will do is we will create and open a new Excel worksheet. Although you might be using prepared or predefined schedules for your projects, this video will show you how to create your own form of a distribution panel schedule. And of course, once you learn how to create your own form of a DB schedule, you will also be able to create an SMDB or submain distribution board and MDB, which is the main distribution board schedule as well. And that is because DB, SMDB and MDB schedules share the same features, but with a slight difference as we will see later in this video. Also, if you are not familiar with Excel tools, well, in this video, you will get to know some of the interesting preferences of Excel. Now let's start creating the three phase DB schedule. First thing I'll do is I'll define the DB's attributes, which includes the DB name, where it is fed from, its entry cable size, its circuit breaker size, and etc. So the first thing I'll do is I'll merge more than one cell at once and create my cells. So what I did is I just selected a multi cells all together i merged them and then i'll click on thick outside borders to give it a border so i can write here and define the name of the db i will do the same thing here and merge another cells and click on thick outside borders to give it a border now instead of doing this process all over again it will take too much of time so what i can do is I will hover the mouse into the corner of the cell and will notice that a black cross is appearing in the screen. So once you hover the mouse to the corner of any cell, it will automatically change the cursor into a black cross. So once I click on this cross and drag the mouse either vertically or horizontally, it will automatically copy the original cell. So it will not only copy the cell, but it will also copy the properties of this cell. And also if there is a text written inside the cell, it will also be copied in the new cell. So right now I want to define six parameters or six attributes for the DB. So what I am going to do is I will separate them in two rows. So six parameters in the first row, and I will do the same and drag the mouse below. Now I can define what I want to define exactly as a headlines of the DB. So we already mentioned the name, where the DB is fed from, location of DB, number of phases circuit breaker size and finally wire or cable entry cable size Next, I will define the branch circuit's characteristics, which will start from here. So I will make a cell here and we'll call it circuit number. Then I can easily create another cell by just dragging the mouse to the right side and make this circuit breaker. Here will be the circuit breaker. Next will be the cable size, or in this case, it will be the wire CSA, which is the cross-sectional area. Now, I can also add another another cell over here and call it wire type. It will not make a difference whether the type is in the left side or the 
cross-sectional area is on the left side. So what is left is to make a description for the circuit. So description usually going to use a lot of lines or maybe the text will be long. So we can just merge all these cells at once and give it a borders as well. Don't forget to also click on the middle alignment over here to align the text to be at the center of the cell. Now I have to define the loads. Although I can make just one load which includes the lighting and power and all loads in just one cell or one column, but always it's preferred to choose or to segregate the loads into different loads, like the lighting to be separated, power sockets, water heaters, air conditioners, and other loads. So what we will do is we will merge this cell and give it a border. Then we will make the other loads in a separate cell as well. Now I will define these cells and give them its names. I'll begin with the lighting. Then power sockets. Then air conditioners, water heaters. This could be also the cookers and other loads. I can click all of these at once and align the text, then click on wrap text to be able to see the whole text. Now I will add three more cells over here to indicate the R, Y, B faces. I will call this R, this one Y, this one B. Since the DB is three phase type, we can merge three faces or three cells just in one cell for the circuit number. What I mean is I will select on three circuits because each of these cells are going to indicate one circuit and I'll click on merge and center and give it a boundary as well and call this one. So I will assume that this dB is 24 poles. Since each circuit number has three faces, one, two, and three, this means that we will create eight circuits numbers that will give me a total of 24 one-phase branch circuit. You will notice that when I define the cell with a number or with number one, then dragged it for copy, then the new cells are automatically created with the following numbers. Now I will define the circuit breaker cells. So these are 24 total of circuit breaker cells. The wire type as well is going to be per face. So I can also select multi cells this way and then drag the mouse to the right, then it will copy the same cells. So I'll do the same thing for Y cross sectional area. For the description, I will need to make the whole area merged this way. Also for the loads, it will be per face. I can do this for all loads. I also can continue and make this for the RYB faces. Now, as you can see, the table is semi-finished, but still we need to calculate the total load or give cells for the total load below. So I'll make this cell for the total connected load.
even here I can make a total of this load. For example, this is lighting. I want to see the total load of this lighting in particular. I can also do the same for the R, Y, B faces to calculate the total of R, Y, and B. I can also add another cell over here to make a demand factor. I'll give it a boundary and keep the text aligned in the center. Or this is a demand. We will make a demand factor for each one of the loads. One more thing we can add in here is the total demand load. course the demand load will apply for all loads as well or I can keep it cell by cell So we said here it's going to be, it's a line first in the center, and this is total. and water heaters. What is left is the cookers and other loads. Total cooker loads. Total and also we want to know the total of the faces which is the total of the R and Y and B. We will wrap these text to be able to see the whole text. Now the demand factor will be Now, as you can see, we ended up the schedule and I don't think that we need to add anything more. We just can add here a cell that defines or that states whether this loads or this DB is balanced or not balanced. 
So we can call this cell as balancement. And this cell will indicate whether this DB is balanced or not balanced. Now, the next step is to define the formulas that we are going to use to calculate these loads 